Greetings and salutations, YouTubers. This is ZillaFan85, back today with my latest video, my latest figure review. And as I had mentioned last time, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my Imperial Toys Godzilla figure. Uh, so, um, this is the, uh, this is the six inch version of this Godzilla Imperial also made a larger scale, uh, 12 inch version. Um, but again, this is the smaller size, the six inch. Um, so, you know, it, again, these came out in, uh, 1985, I believe is when Imperial released, uh, Godzilla as well as, uh, as well as the King Kong figure that I reviewed, uh, last time. And this particular incarnation of Godzilla, even though it doesn't really <laughs> look like any, any one of sorts, but I do believe it is supposed to be based off of the 84 slash 85 Godzilla design. Um, so just as far as something to note there, obviously again, extremely stylized and, you know, <laughs> certainly not very accurate. Um, but, you know, it was one of my oldest Godzilla figures. Again, as I, as I mentioned before, my very first Godzilla figure was the Mattel Godzilla's Gang Godzilla. Um, that one I had gotten a year or two prior to this one and the King Kong figure. But, um, but these two, those two were next in line, essentially. And, uh, that those three were really all that I had for a few years until you know around uh, 1994 when uh, Trendmasters started producing their Godzilla and Kaiju figure line, and obviously at that point is when I started collecting more uh, more you know uh, Godzilla and other Kaiju uh, in figure form, and you know that really like I said so really with the Trendmasters line is when it is when it truly took off, but. Uh, you know, for a few years anyways, like I said, these were kind of my mainstay figures that I had, at least, uh, to get me going. And, um, so, certainly not a lot of nostalgic, uh, you know, fondness for it, even though, again, this, this figure has certainly been, uh, the subject of, of much mockery, <laughs> to say the least. But, um, let's go ahead, though, let's just, uh, take a look at the figure itself here with the paint and the detail. Um, so starting out at the head here, um, obviously very noticeable up front are those weird red lips that Imperial Toys did for reasons. <laughs> I really don't know what the point of this was, giving him red lips or, you know, like lipstick for some reason. But uh, anyways, then you got these sort of pearly white teeth. And they are actually individually sculpted, so I definitely give them some credit there. Uh, there is some detail work, and I believe it's like a deep red inside the mouth. It's just, unfortunately, this is a much older figure, so it's kind of dusty and a little bit hard to tell. But um, just to kind of showcase for you guys inside the mouth anyways. So not too bad for what it is. And then, of course, you got the nostrils etched in here on the snout. And then these eyes, just sort of these big white eyes with black pupils in the center. You guys can see that. And of course you got some rivets and scales on the top of the head. And of course some of these uh, wrinkles and grooves along the sides of the face there. And kind of work their way into the scales as you work towards the back of the head and into the neck there. And obviously all the scales done all around the body here. And of course the paint done in this greenish color, very greenish color. But it's not just one, um, not just one shade of green, it's actually a couple shades. You actually have a, um, have like the lighter green and then you have this sort of dark forest foresty green almost almost like a charcoalish color which would be accurate obviously being that Godzilla is charcoalish in color uh, but then you got this silver highlight in the center of the chest here for whatever reason but I mean at least it's a little bit of a little bit of contrasting color scheme in the paint anyways though and of course mixed in with that very dark forest green and of course the lighter green all sort of done throughout the main parts of his body there um, again on the arms you got that as well and then of course more of the scales and you got some musculature done on the arms as well 
And of course, going into the hands now, as you guys can see here, um, many, many, many years ago, one of the fingers broke off on my Imperial Godzilla's hand, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, it just kind of is what it is on the left hand here. As you can see, the right hand is still intact with the four fingers there. Again, that greenish color, you got a little bit of detail on the finger, on the hands and fingers as well. You got the sort of whitish colored uh, claws on the ends of the fingers on both sides, as you guys can see there. So, not too bad. And then, of course, more of the scales and different shades of the green going down the legs, down into the feet, more scales and more prominent detail work there done on the feet and then of course the toe claw is again done in that sort of off-white color again obviously the you know it's a little bit worn obviously because it is such an old uh figure here again i've had this over 30 years in my collection so is what it is and on the bottom of the feet of course you got the logoing for the imperial toys with the signature trademark logo there of course, you got the Tump the uh, Toho Company Limited on the other side, and it does say 1985 for the copyright when this was released. So pretty cool there. And of course, you got the uh, different colorings of green again going down throughout the tail here. All the segments done along the tail, and they did it top and bottom. So I mean, at least I appreciate the attention to detail keeping it done throughout and then of course you got the dorsal spine so you got the larger uh center row done in this silverish color again kind of matching that silverish highlight in the center of the chest there again obviously the paint just kind of worn a bit over the years and then the smaller outer dorsal spines done just in more of that uh various shades of green color and that carries out into the tail all that, um, all those, uh, the greenish colors going throughout the dorsal spines up until just about the end of the tail there, as you guys can see. So pretty cool, and they are, they do have a little bit of sharpness to the touch. They're not terribly bad. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's not a super, it's not like a real hard plastic, but it's not super soft either. So just to kind of, uh, to denote that, so... And uh, other than that, I think that pretty much covers it for the paint and the detail on this guy. For the articulation, um, pretty basic. You got the arms, which can rotate. Yeah, they do tend to rub up against the legs a little bit, but you can get them to go all the way around if you kind of just work it. I don't know that I would necessarily suggest doing that on a regular basis because you could end up, you know, rubbing off some of the paint. These are already older figures as it is, so you may not want to do that, but uh, it is an option there. And then, of course, the legs can rotate, and if you move the arms out of the way, they can pretty freely go all the way around, as you guys can see. So, just to have that. And then the tail can rotate, and that can go all the way around, as you guys can see. So, five POA, five points of articulation. Again, fairly basic, standard fare, but again, a vintage figure, so it is what it is. Um, and that pretty much covers that for the articulation. Now for sizing, let's go ahead and first take out the ruler. And, of course, here measuring in inches. So, as you guys can see, he does, looking at it there, roughly stand right about at the 6-inch mark. So, pretty much as advertised then. So, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Obviously, you can convert that into centimeters if that's what you prefer. And just as the size comparison, as I mentioned that I would do in my last video, we'll go ahead and scale him in with the Imperial Toys King Kong. And unfortunately, as I had alluded to in the last video, it's not a um, not a good uh, sizing <laughs> match. Because you can see Kong really towers above 
uh, Godzilla over here. Kong is like eight, uh, like eight or nine inches, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly from last time. So, I mean, you're looking at at least a couple inch uh, difference here. So, again, not accurate, but is what it is. I guess they didn't really take that into account when they were producing these figures. But still, cool vintage figures nonetheless. So, again, you guys can see that there. All right. Kong off to the side there. And now as far as pricing goes, um, well, again, even though these are vintage figures, they uh, still can be found pretty readily if you look on eBay and whatnot. Uh, for Godzilla here, I've usually seen him around the $20 range. Now that, of course, is without that uh, Imperial tag that he came with. If you want him with the tag, then you're going to be looking at, I'd say, at least double the price, around $40, maybe even $50. So I would keep that in mind. And personally, uh, I, I would not want to pay that much for, for this figure, just to be honest with you. So, but, you know, if you want to get, uh, try to just get them without the tag. And, uh, you know, for that $20 price point, I mean, it's not not too bad, so... Anyways, though, folks, uh, as you may have seen in the, um, for the titling of this video, I do have a pretty big announcement here, and uh, I recorded a separate segment for that, so I am going to switch you guys over to that. As far as the figure review itself goes, that does wrap it up for this one, and obviously if you do uh, want to subscribe, please feel free to do so. If you'd like to like and or comment on any of my videos, please feel free to do so as well. And without further ado, let's go ahead and swap over into the announcement segment, so stay tuned, folks. Well, folks... As Charles Grodin's character Fred Wilson uh, said in the King Kong 1976 film, here's to the big one. Uh, by that, I, yes, officially mean, as you guys can see on the screen here, uh, Tucson Kaiju Festival 2023 is happening. It's being hosted by my good friend Everett, a.k.a. Godzilla Fan Freaks, over on YouTube. And um, it, it's just going to be awesome. So it's going to be in Tucson, Arizona. Um, and it's going to be on November 3rd of this year. Uh, which, of course, November 3rd uh, marks Godzilla's birthday, so really, really an awesome uh, time to be able to have this convention. Uh, so with this announcement, I do want to also include that I will officially be attending. Uh, I'm going to be staying in Tucson for a few days um, and, you know, hopefully getting to hang out with Everett a bit and, of course, uh, you know, attending the convention. Uh, I also plan to help him out in areas that need be whether it's setting up, cleaning up, etc., etc., and uh, hopefully as well as I've discussed with him uh, the potential of co-hosting maybe a couple panels that they're going to have there. Uh, so the convention, as you guys can see on the screen, uh, like I said, November 3rd, 2023, will take place from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's uh, what they consider Mountain Standard Time because that's what Arizona falls under. However, Arizona is one of the states that um, doesn't participate in daylight saving so they do not change their clocks so actually currently they are more on um, really more on pacific time currently until uh, until the end of daylight savings which is a couple days uh, after this event so just kind of keep that in mind as far as the uh, times go and the time zones here um, but yep, it's going to be awesome. It's at this place called Bookman's East, like I said, in Tucson, Arizona, November 3rd of this year, and should really be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, obviously all things, uh, Godzilla and Kaiju taking place at this event. Uh, I know they're, they're like I said, they're going to have panels, obviously, uh, you know, going to have vendors there, artists there, uh, including, uh, the awesome artist Yosh, uh, who ever uh, has uh, definitely promoted uh, on his channel. Uh, Yosh, is, Yosh is a really cool guy. I'm hoping to maybe have him uh, uh, do some of my channel art. I'll, uh, I'm probably going to get with him when I'm there. Um, and, you know, so like I said, just all around going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a couple other YouTubers that will be there. Uh, Nick from uh, The Monster Report and um, 
Chris, aka Goji Fan 93. Uh, they will also be there. I believe that they will. Uh, there may be a couple other of the Godzilla and Kaiju YouTubers there as well. Uh, so, like I said, really should be a blast, folks. Um, so, of course, I don't want to um, kind of <laughs> beat beat this whole thing into the ground here, but certainly just kind of wanted to go through the announcement, let you guys know, and let you know that I will officially be attending. Um, so definitely stay tuned. Stay tuned on uh, Everett uh, Godzilla Fan Freaks' channel for any further announcements. All right, folks. Well, I do want to thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you be good to yourselves. And sayonara.